Hello again dear brothers and sisters. I come to you with a message of shaking. The shaking is coming and where the shaking is going to take place. We have to find it from the Bible. It is there in the Bible. So welcome again. Let us have the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come before you. At this moment, as I want to share your message with the people, and these are your people, by the way, Lord. And so you know their hearts, you know their needs, you know their emptiness, and you know their cries. This message, let it be like a water to their hearts that it may move them to love you more and come across to you than making them get afraid. Because when grace abound, there is victory and peace. Father, please use me as your instrument and vessel. Pour your Holy Spirit upon me. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So my friend, I want to talk to you about the shaking. Yes. If you are not an SDA, uh, worry not. This message also is for you because we are going to because Jesus Christ spoke to the Bible, and so we are going to find it. Though we are going to use some of the book, we are going to use one book from uh, Ellen G. White. So worry not about this because the foundation is the Bible. And from the book of Matthew, chapter thirteen, verse twenty-four. It says this one from verse, uh, from verse 24, 13, the book of Matthew. It says, Another parable put he forth, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which soweth good seeds in the field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when he the blade he was sprung up and blowed forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, is thou not so good seeds in the field? From whence then are these tears came from? He said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, We thou then that we go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tears, yet loot up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the leapers, Gather ye together, first the tares, and bind them in bundles, to burn them, but to gather the wheat into the barn. And Jesus Christ uh, gave an uh, explanation of that. And from verse 37, before going to the, my explanation of the shaking, he says, and uh, then uh, he answered and said unto them, Either soweth the good seed, the son of man, the feed, the world. The good seeds are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them with the devil, the harvest, the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. And therefore these tares are gathered up, gathered and burned in fire. So shall it be in the end of the one of the of the world. Hallelujah. So now we have found that the shaking has to happen to the end of the world. And the one who are going to participate in the shaking are angels. Okay? So there must be something to make it work. And also we find that they looked like the believers. But at the end, during the harvest, everything is a sin. So this is the, for the end of the time. So this work will happen at the end of the time. Jesus Christ himself said, this will be the end of the world. That is the shaking. It will happen where this work will happen in the church. Because he said, God saw, uh, the, man, the man saw good seeds. Okay? And then somebody came and sold bad seed tears. And so things started to happen and the angels were able to see. Angels were able to see these are tears. 
Not men, angels were able to see these are tears. So sometimes the church you may see people as they are holy, but they are tears. And we cannot say these are tears. God himself knows them and is going to send angels. So let us go to the another book. This is the Spiritual Gift Volume 1. From We are going to read it from, from this is chapter 32, which talks about the shaking. The whole, we can read it, page 133. Uh, and, uh, I saw in a vision that he saw people uh, crying, pleading with God, agonizing. Uh, they were praying, seeking the Lord. And if angels crowded th around them, pressing their darkened, darkened, darkness upon them to shut out Jesus from their view. Wow. So these dark angels were working to shut Jesus from the view of these people. That their eyes might be drawn to the darkness that surrounded them and they distrust God and next mama against him. Their only safety was in the keeping their eyes direct, directed upward. Angels say angels were having their charge over them, the, the people of God and that they Poison atmosphere from these evil angels was pressed around these anxious ones. The angels which had the charge over them were continually wafting their wings over them to scatter the thick darkness that was surrounding them. So let us go on. Some I saw did not participate in this work. So when these people are the devoted Christians were praying, crying to the Lord, it seemed that there were people who were not participating in this work of agonizing and pleading. They seemed indifferent and careless. They were not resisting the devil, the darkness around them. It shut them in like a thick crowd. The angels of God left them and went to the head of those earnest, earnest praying ones. So the angels left them. So he saw, uh, she saw the angels of God ascending to the assistance of those who were pleading for help. But the angels left those who made no effort to help themselves. And let, let me share this with you. I have to increase the light a little bit. Okay. I asked the meaning. This is... Uh, Page 184, I, uh, paragraph 3, that is Spiritual Gifty, Volume 1. I asked the meaning of the shaking I had seen. I was shown that it would be caused by the straight testimony, called forth by the counsel of the true witness, to the audition. So now we can go to it, the, 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 the audition message. Okay, a little bit. I, I want... I won't waste time on this. I want you to understand something which is very important. It's the book of Revelation, chapter 3, friends. Uh, chapter 3, verse 14. It does lead 14. Uh, Revelation uh, 3, 14. Is, and unto the angel of the church of the audition light, these things said the man, uh, said the man, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So we find that is as a correlation. And he's talking about buying, uh, buying ladement, the must be clothed, uh, okay, high self, and uh, gold, faith, okay? But he's talking that if we read verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him. So me in this church, as a problem of not having Jesus in their hearts. Okay? That's why I say, behold, I stand at the door, knock. If a person is knocking to open, that he needs you to open for him, does it, what does it mean? That means he's outside. So the problem with this church, that, that, that one is Jesus Christ was outside of the people. And so it has gone with the speech of Jifty, uh, 184, paragraph 3. And it will lead, and it said, 
it will have its effect upon the hearts of the receiver of the testimony and to lead him to exalt the standard and pour forth the straight truth. This straight testimony some will not bear. They will rise up against it and this will cause a shaking among God's people. Hallelujah. This is, this is painful, okay? This straight testimony some will not bear. They will rise up against it and this will cause a shaking among them. I saw that the testimony of the true witness has not been half-headed. The solemnly testimony upon which the destiny of the church hangs has been lightly esteemed. If not entirely disregarded, this testimony must work deeper repentance and all that truly receive it will obey it and be purified. I was shown those whom I had before seen weeping. I saw that the company of guardian angels around them had doubled. They were clothed with hammer from their head to their feet. The number of this company, that is paragraph 186, paragraph 1, it says the number of the this company had lessened. Some had been shaken out and left by the way. The callous and indifferent will not join the who praised the victory and the salvation enough to agonize, persevere, and pay for it, did not obtain it. And they were left behind in darkness and their numbers were immediately made up by others taking hold of the truth and coming to the ranks. Oh, it's painful. means even this church, the church of God, other people are going to leave, are going to leave the church, and others are going to come to take their position. That's what the Bible says. That's what the spirit of prophecy says. The evil angels pressed around them, but they could not have no power over them. There are a lot of things you can lead yourself, my friend. Uh, paragraph one, it's uh, paragraph two, one eight six. The same book says. The honest who had been heard or prevented from hearing the truth now eager laid hold of the truth spoken. All fear of their relatives was gone. The truth alone was exalted to them. It was dearer and more precious than life. They had been hungering and thirsting for truth. I asked what had made this great change. An angel answered, it is the later rain. Hallelujah. The refreshing from the presence of the Lord. The loud cry of the 30 angel. That means of chapter 18. Okay. A book of Revelation. My friend, I want to encourage you. We are living in the end times. The shaking is going to happen. But who are going to be taken out are those who don't have Jesus. When Jesus is knocking from outside, you don't want to open your heart to welcome him. You are preparing your fall. My friend, I beseech you. To start seeking Jesus. Because we have read from this spiritual, uh, spiritual gift, chapter 1 and in chapter 32, paragraph 184. Okay? Paragraph 184. Yes, paragraph 183. Not paragraph. Paragraph 2, chapter, uh, page 183. Saying that, Evil angels were pressing upon them to make the darkness that these may not look upon Jesus. So my friend, you need to survive the shaking. You need to have Jesus. The matter is not to become religious, to religious, reading spiritual, spiritual prophets, trying to do whatever they say, keeping the Sabbath and doing those things and doing those things right, food, all those things are good, but if you don't have Jesus, you're going to leave this church. You're going to leave the people of God, no matter how much religious you are or how much liberal you are. Because there are people who are leaving this church, either leaders or pastors, who are living as if this church is, belongs to them. They can do whatever they want, but I in believe. God is looking at them. That's why angels saw them doing those things in the church. Sleeping with ladies. Doing all bad stuff. Taking money of God. 
The angels cried, God, can we come and approach them? And an angel said, and God said, wait, wait, till the time of harvest. So my friend, if you have been on such habits of doing fornication while in the church, if you are leader sleeping with, with the church members or your fellow workers or taking money, church money, using it for your benefits, taking bribes, doing all other stuff which, you, which a Christian cannot do, Jesus Christ is calling you back. He can forgive you. Start to seek Jesus. Forgiveness is available. Ready for you. You don't have to pay for it. Forgiveness is weary. is ready for you, my friend. Jesus Christ is calling you. Shaking is coming. But those who will have Jesus, angels will come. And double number. If you have fall, the moment will come when darkness increases like now. We see darkness everywhere. Homosexuality and all the things happening in the church and all the n- doctrines. Hey, friends, the darkness is coming. It's coming, pressing upon people of God. But people of God are going to seek God, are going to focus on Jesus. They're not going to focus on things, on challenges. And angels are going to increase in their number. They're going to strengthen them. They're going to give them hope. They're going to shine their light on their faces and they are going to receive Jesus in the light. Coming in glory. My friend, I I just beseech you, seek Jesus. Turn away from your old bad ways. Turn from your evil ways. Come to Jesus. He's willing to forgive you. He's willing to forgive you. He's willing to save you. He's willing to carry you up. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 7, 37. Jesus said, The one who comes to me, I shall not cast him away. So my friend, Jesus is calling you. Hallelujah. That's the word of prayer. Father, thank you. Because we know the shaking is coming. But Father, I pray, please, do whatever it takes to help us not to be shaken out. Give us your Holy Spirit. We are waiting for the later rain. But Father, when the later rain comes, let us be among those who are going to enjoy that shower of blessings. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember to share this video and to subscribe, to like and leave your comments. May God bless you. Amen.